Hi, I'm Tom, or my friends call me TC, and uh, I'm the brand director for Portobello Road Gin. The story begins uh, 18 years ago, really. Uh, Jed Felton, the, uh, the, the managing director, he opened his first bar in Leeds, uh, a company called Lelex, and a bar called Oporto. Um, and uh, he continued to open bars and restaurants, uh, and we took one in, in London on Portobello Road a fair few years ago now, uh, the Portobello Star. And just three and a half years ago, uh, Jake, uh, he moved out of um, the, the bedroom above and we were thinking of ideas of what to do with the space above the bar. Um, Jake's immediate idea was a, a gin museum, a place dedicated to learn about the history of gin. And uh, we were all quite keen with that idea. Uh, so uh, the, the project for the Gin Institute uh, was, uh, was, was started. Um, that's a space now where you can come down and learn about the history of uh, London Dry Gin and create your own gin as well. We opened it uh, just over three and a half years ago now um, and the idea was to educate uh, consumers on the rich history of London Dry Gin. So people come and uh, take part in a course that lasts about three hours. Um, we go through uh, the gin museum that we have on uh, the, 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 the first floor um, and we have all kinds of different gin memorabilia there including uh, Jerry Thomas, a very famous bartender's uh, business card from 1862 and a first copy of uh, the very first printed American cocktail book, uh, the Bon Vivant's Companion or How to Mix Drinks. Uh, so we go through, uh, I guess, a history of gin uh, on that floor and then head up to the still room above uh, where the fun really starts to happen and you can come and make your own uh, gin brand. We walk through all the different botanicals in uh, their raw form but also singularly distilled. Uh, we don't just have the botanicals that we have for Portobello Road there, uh, we have uh, about 40 different ones, uh, all uh, from classic botanicals to things that are quite unusual as well. Uh, and uh, once uh, we've given you a little guidance, you uh, can create your own blend with us. Uh, all the uh, gin turns uh, leave with a bottle of uh, their own gin plus uh, a bottle of uh, Portobello Road as well. What sets Portobello uh, apart from other brands is perhaps its unique story. Uh, we're born out of uh, the Gin Institute above our bar on Portobello Road, the Portobello Star. Um, uh, so a very unique story really has helped the, uh, the set the brand apart from, from others in that respect. Um, its uh, botanical structure is very classic, it uses um, very traditional London dry gin botanicals in the recipe, perhaps with the exception of nutmeg, uh, which gives a real nice kind of peppery warmth and a little bit of bite to the finish. Uh, so it makes great uh, a gin and tonic. Uh, tonic's a powerful flavour, but uh, the gin stands up really well against that powerful flavour with that nutmeg at the end. When we were uh, developing the brand, uh, every time we'd take the brand off the still, uh, we tasted it uh, three different ways. We tasted it as a gin and tonic, it's the most consumed gin beverage worldwide, so it had to work like that. We tasted it as a martini, uh, we knew that it had to work on its own, and also we tasted it as a Negroni. Our signature serve though is a, a, a gin and tonic with a twist of pink grapefruit. Uh, just the oils from the skin uh, change the aroma of the gin and tonic rather than the palate. I think too many people are too quick to put uh, lots of citrus juice in there like lime or lemon juice which can mask some of those beautiful flavours. Portobello Road uses nine botanicals. Uh, when we were formulating the recipe we were looking at classic gin brands and uh, uh, old traditional gin recipes. So most of these were um, I guess sourced from uh, these recipes that we, uh, that, that we were looking into. Um, there's nothing really sort of unusual for a traditional London dry gin brand in there. Um, it uses juniper, coriander, angelica and oris, which are used by most gin brands, certainly London dry gin brands on the market. Uh, we use licorice root, lemon peel and orange peel. Uh, most brands will then, of course, use some kind of citrus through their, uh, through their gin. Uh, however, we chose uh, some spices at the end, which perhaps are a, a touch more unusual. We use cassia bark and nutmeg. Uh, nutmeg, uh, not often used in gin, but provides a lovely uh, warmth, a peppery finish to the back of the palate. Um, which means it makes a great gin and tonic but also stands, stands up to the depth and complexity of uh, more, more uh, complicated mixed drinks. Copernicus is our 30 litre still. Copernicus the second actually. 
Uh, the first one was uh, much too small. Uh, we ordered it online and the first one appeared and we were like, oh, we're not going to be able to make much with that. So we had to order uh, Copernicus the second, where uh, Portobello Road Gin was first formulated our recipe. Uh, that has it ho its home above uh, the Portobello Star in what we call the Gin Institute, our gin museum and uh, still room where we invite customers to come and make their own gin. Uh, so all our, uh, all our uh, gin that comes out of the Gin Institute is made in Copernicus the second. I guess um, uh, the secret to Portobello Road Gin's success has uh, been a, a, a culmination of many things really. I think uh, the liquid is uh, very approachable not only to bartenders but also to consumers. People want to use it in the classic cocktails but it also makes a fantastic gin and tonic. Um, also um, the gin essence that we're going through at the moment, people are looking back at those old classic cocktail recipes and uh, gin is really going through a boom at the moment. Um, the diversity in gin is uh, unfathomable really. Uh, you can use, uh, well you have to use a botanical uh, juniper berry by, by law, but then you can use any other botanical, any natural part of a plant. So the mind boggles with the different combinations. Portobello Road Gin will be over in New Orleans. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it, uh, but Jake is over there. Uh, he will be set up at the Alibi, uh, one of the famous bars over there uh, for, for the week uh, with uh, Portobello Road uh, doing tastings and gin and tonics. Uh, uh, so go and, go and see Jake at Tales.